Hi, I made this sunstone fountain sculpture. It's covered with mosaic tiles and selenite, quartz crystals all over it on the top. This was my big art project last year and I wanted to show you exactly how I did everything step by step. I'm an artist and a good handyman, so I wanted to make this thing up from scratch. So let me show you how I put it all together. I pulled a bunch of pictures apart and did a little digital mock-up of what I wanted my sunstone to look like. So I decided I'm gonna make this uh, head. I'm gonna put a bunch of uh, I'm going to make it three-dimensional with a sort of clay that I'm going to make out of cement. I've done a lot of research on that on the internet. I'm going to try to make it uh, kind of about six inches thick, kind of from the side here. I'm going to try to build up his forehead and his nose with the clay-like material. I'm going to try to adhere it using screws. This is Hardy Backer cement board. It's pretty cheap. I think it cost me about 10 or 11 bucks. Okay, so this is the shape we're going to cut out. We're going to use this reciprocal saw here. Uh, the blade's pretty jagged, which will help get through that. And the blade's pretty cheap. I've got my ear protection on, and I put pants on. The other thing I like about this material here I should show you is this, the reason why it's nice and strong and holds together well is this. It doesn't turn to powder because it's got this fiberglass sort of netting in here which helps keep the whole thing from crumbling when you cut it with that uh, reciprocal saw there. My helper traced it so we could have, uh, we're going to cut it out and that'll be the back of the sculpture. Alright, so I got it cut out and that will be the back. And I'll have these, you know, pretty much lined up. Oh, about six inches apart from each other. So I got to build that out, secure it. So here's a side view of what I'm trying to make here. You see kind of the nose here and the mouth where the water is going to spit out right here. So I've got kind of like a plateau and another plateau. I'm going to try to build something sort of like that. So I could just kind of build that up at a little bit of an angle and build the face up nice and thick and rounded, probably about, you know, three, three inches maybe poking out but do this more like a sculpture i just you know have to figure out a way to get these to come together maybe with some bolts or something okay, so here's the two sides here uh one's got a little bit more of an edge here so i'm going to take this uh file here so i'm going to get something to some of this real quick this seems to work pretty well for that it's working good i'm going to take a bunch of tiles that i got up the street I just walked around and for free this place gave me a whole bunch of tiles that I'm cutting up to make mosaic tiles and I could put you know some darker ones on the bottom to give it some depth and dimension darker ones around the eyes and the shadows of the cheeks there and the and the temples for example all those could be a little darker a little grayer and all the rest could be white marble I also have different very color rocks of my white colored rocks over here. I've been chopping those up. There's a lot of marble in there that's kind of cool. I've got these uh, holes I've drilled in here and I'm going to put these bolts in. I, I never really like to buy anything when I do these projects, so I just scrounged up these old bolts and I'm going to kind of sandwich one side between two bolts and the other side between two bolts and then it'll be a nice fixed width between the two sides, the front and back. See here? took this tool I made, a little scribe tool, all it is is like a little bracket and a sharpie tape to it and I used that to kind of go around this edge like that. I put it up there last night and just stared at it for a day 
I like to take my time on these projects so I can really think it through and size it up and figure out all the materials I need. I thought it was too big and silly looking up there, so I'm going to cut it down quite a bit. I like it. I think the proportions are better. Now right here I'm going to drill a hole for the mouth and that's where I'll stick my tube in for my pump in my pond so it can spit out water and dribble out down here and fall down into my pond. I am going to use this drill with this big masonry bit right here. Masonry bits are good for cement and stuff like that. I'm going to carve out this hole. And I found this old piece of PVC pipe up in the attic so I'm going to chop off a chunk of that. The whole point of this is to kind of try to make things on a super low budget. Uh, I'm going to use this uh, little miter box deal here. They always say measure twice, cut once, right? Here's a piece. All right, so I got the hole here, and I, this is about the right size, but I want to drill it out a little bit more so it can, can go at an upward angle. Fit up this hole in the back right here. Not quite there. I need to make a little better angle on there. Quit eating that, dude. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna just kind of push this and bump it up against the top there until it sort of carves it out at a little bit more of a hole of an angle up there. Get this in here. Yeah, that's not bad. See, that's kind of gonna be about the right angle. So now we just have to drill this back hole here. Get down inside here and you will see it's sort of aiming upward. Towards the second hole. Let's see if I made it. Oh boy. Look at that. Perfect. And it's really nice and tight too. It's right about there, I think. How to do it. Yeah, looks good. So I'm going to take a bunch of these sort of leftover pieces. I'm going to kind of put them in here and mark it right there and chop off a little pieces. I've got my dad's old square type thing which can make a nice straight edge. I really love this thing though here. This is what I use to cut tile if I cut tile. I don't do that very often but you can sort of set it here and make sure that you can draw a right angle. The other thing I might use is my handy dandy machete here which I keep handy when like zombies come over and or people trying to steal my records. Here's the first piece I cut here. It's, I made it a little deeper than it needs to be so I'll just this in here like that. Can I get it in place? Tilt it a little bit down like that so water can roll off of it. Put one right here on top and then I put one under here cascading downward, cascading downward until I can fill in all the sides bottom. I'm putting this uh, cement glue and or uh, liquid nails all around the edges of both this piece that's going in, and I put it all around this area here too. See if I can put this in here. That's pretty good. It's almost waterproof. See what? And I'm just playing in the mud, smearing this around. Well, I put a little bit of this uh, cement stuff around the, the pipe here. You can see insides and outside. Kind of a nice day here in Nevada. Got the little misters on. A little sound of the swimming pool. My little pond where my head soon will be. Entertaining my fish and my turtle. So this is where my little creation will go when it's done. Hey, there's Taser face. Hi Taze. How you doing buddy? Just chilling in the pool. Thanks for coming and visiting me. Everybody got a good snack there. When we first moved into our house in Henderson, Nevada, this was what the pond looked like after I cleaned all the dirt and stuff out of it and put a coat of plastic paint in there, painted it up with a color so that it looked nice when it was turned into a koi pond. This is the pond in a local nursery. I just love it. This is kind of what I'm heading for with my plants and my koi fish. I'd like to get a whole bunch more turtles and stack them up like this. So anyway, here's my little pond, which will be pretty nice when everything's done here. I got my umbrella, my little lounge chair here.
Okay, I've made good progress here. I've put in all these side pieces and just sort of smeared on. Liquid nails actually worked really well too. That other cement bonder stuff seemed a little bit uh, too silicony and rubbery to me, but it'll be good and waterproof at least. And then I put this liquid nails in. You see how I've kind of sealed off portions of the sides here and formed up the side shapes. I've got this top piece here that I actually labeled because I keep cutting it up accidentally. And that will go right on here like this. And it'll be down enough that it won't stick up once I kind of tap it down a little bit. I also put a, maybe two layers of uh, liquid nails on the bolts, remember, because I'm worried that they might rust and then rust will start pouring out in different spots. I'm a little worried someone could reach over that fence and just grab it and steal it. So now I'm starting to think I'll secure it. And the way I might do that is by you see those uh, bolts still passing through down there on the bottom? Uh, I'll probably attach a chain to each side there, drill a hole, stick it out here, so I can actually bolt it down. The space is probably too high now after I cut off the top, remember? So the next step is I'm going to grab some of these pieces I have, and I'm going to make some pieces like this that will kind of help it stick out a little bit probably a nose piece that'll start about here and come down to about here. I might do it a couple layers just to help build up the uh, depth a little bit. And I'm gonna glue those down with the liquid nails again. From tracing the original shapes I drew, just kind of lifting it like that. I'm gonna make it a little shorter up here so that, you know, the nose usually tapers. It's not gonna be a big bump and broken nose. It's gonna kind of taper out in an angle like that from off the sculpture here. Here's the eye, here's the mouth and the chin. So I'm gonna cut a bunch of shapes like that. I might even cut this twice. I might cut another one that has this part of the nose on it. Not like that, more like this. What do I have two or three levels to it? And then also I want to do some pieces up here on the head. I'll probably put one piece up here and lower it down a little bit. Move the eyes down, forehead piece like this. A piece like that. And then maybe one other little piece over here just to bring that forehead down a little lower. So I cut out this nose piece. Instead of putting it here where it belongs, I'm going to shrink it down a little lower because the whole face really needs to come down. The uh, nose I carved pretty quickly using this tool here. I stuck a really old nasty blade on it. You see that? It's very, very ragged and old. Uh, so I figured, well, may as well try it for this. And it worked really well to kind of carve out around the edges. And once I scored it, I could just sort of snap it and break it off. So what I do when I glue most of these things together is I leave it kind of scratchy like that, because that's how you do it when you do tiles. And I do what's called double buttering, where you butter this side and butter what you're sticking it to. So that double butter kind of makes some little air pockets in there, and it should help it to stay longer term. So I'm gonna position that a little lower than I did before, probably build up some stuff around the outside of it. And then I will have uh, halfway towards the nose. I put this kind of like dog cable in there. I think it'll be pretty hard to cut. Those stringy cables are always a little hard to cut. So I, I drilled a hole in the back. I stuck these cables through, twirled them around the bolts that I'd put in here in the beginning so that they wouldn't come out. And uh, then I sealed off the top last night and then on a whim I thought I'm just going to try out this uh, cement recipe. I didn't like how dense it was with all these little rocks and pebbles and crap. So I'm going to go back to the hardware store and buy some just kind of thin set mortar with sand, you know, something without all the little stupid pebbles and crap. But I was surprised how well it stuck. I mean, I thought it would like crack off or something. I've been hitting it and grinding on it. I've been using my file a lot, this file here, kind of going over it and knocking down some of the gravel and the high points. I've always loved this old sunstone sculpture that was on the Nauvoo Temple 
It's an old Mormon sculpture made around oh, 1830 or so. My ancestors actually carved this in the original temple out there. I was always impressed by the strange and austere look of the thing, early American art. I loved the sunstone so much that when my dad passed away, I went to great lengths to carve it into his headstone, carved it out of granite. The sunstone is an old Mormon symbol of heaven. So what I'll do now is I will start working on the forehead more. I'm gonna move everything down. I was looking at my original picture, which looks like this. Kind of modify the forehead. You can kind of see a comparison there. The nose probably needs to be a little less wide. Once I put the tile on it, I don't want the nose to be too fat. I don't want it to be exactly like the original, but I want a little more chin. I don't like that stupid little chin the old one has. I want to make a little stronger, bigger chin. Well, it's pretty early and the morning light is out. I just dropped some kids off at school. One thing I've noticed as an artist is you got to kind of take a day break and step back and just stare at it a little bit so that your mind can look at it more critically and make adjustments to where things go. So I've been looking over the sculpture and I kind of made a lot of adjustments. I didn't like uh, how high this brow type shape was. I looked at the original as you can see the eyes are a lot smaller and lower so I need to make this a lot lower more brooding so I kind of painted over what I had and redrew everything and repositioned everything roughly um, you know made the mouth a little smaller and more of like a kind of puckering shape here uh, then what I did was, you know, when you put a tooth in someone's jaw or whatever, a dentist drills right into the jaw, into the bone, and I figured it'd be good to have some kind of stumps. I was going to use this wire, remember? See that wire back there? And I was going to use that wire, and then I kind of thought, I don't know, it's just too cumbersome, hard to work with. So what I'll probably do next is I might, just to make that rebar kind of feeling to things, I might... Take this kind of like baling wire. I got some stainless steel ba baling wire that will not rust. And then I could kind of maybe swing this around between the screws like this. So that would allow the cement to, to form around these objects and these sort of stumps that I'm putting out. And it'll give it extra strength. Now, the thing I used here were these screws. I just got these over at Lowe's. Uh, they're they're made for hardy backer and this kind of cement board and when you buy them They give you this cool little drill bit here And I have this thing that allows me to to kind of screw them in a little Easier it spins, you know, it doesn't like fall off very easily You know you're working on your art and you kind of forget things. I'm gonna be putting these uh, these uh, mosaic cubes all over everything, right? I mean, that's the plan all along. So I have to make sure I sort of plan on the depth that these will require. I don't want to make things too fat or else when I put these on, it's going to really make it fat. Once I get them stuck on and dried, then I'll put, uh, see like on the swimming pool tiles, that's the grout. So I'll put a really good waterproof grout, especially down by the mouth area. I also don't recommend making everything perfect and symmetrical because it's just boring when you do that. It's better to have things uh, a little bit off, not centered right. For example, he has sort of this Elvis lip. I want to try to preserve that. I want to try to preserve how one side of his eyebrow is a little different than the other. Things just get too boring if they're too perfect. Nature isn't like that. If you look at your face, it's totally not symmetrical. One side looks totally different from the other. Navajo Indians got that right when they, they, they weave their rugs and they, they make imperfections in there on purpose because they basically don't want to affront the gods, they say. Keep that in mind as you make your art. Don't make it too perfect or it gets boring, rigid, and lifeless. So I've taken this wire and wrapped it around all these screw heads just so that the clay will adhere better to it with this wire here, stainless steel so it won't rust. Like rebar, you know, in an old building. This will be inside there giving it extra skeleton strength. I will go mix up some clay and start putting it on the top up here. Taser face, the turtle keeps escaping from the pond here and he gets over here into the swimming pool to take a little swim. My 
little recipe that seemed to work really well for uh, this cement clay that I researched on YouTube actually. It's kind of a best of two or three little recipes. So the first thing I wanted to do is make paper pulp. I have a lot of different kinds of paper, but it seems like uh, toilet paper works really well. So I get a little water in here and bust it up with a fork so it doesn't tear up my blender here. So I'm going to take these couple of forks and pry this apart for a little while and just tear it up a lot. Little bit of dish soap, maybe two tablespoons, with about a oh, third of a roll of toilet paper. So that makes it almost like a weird foam that will go on my cement, along with about three quarters of a cup of this stuff. It's kind of like a glue, cement glue. I was using this chunky kind of concrete mix right there. See all those little rocks in there? I didn't like that, it just didn't work. So I went and bought uh, some mortar mix, which has none of those little rocks in it. It's more like, you know, sand. It'll be a lot smoother. Here's my paper pulp. Let me pinch a little bit and you can feel the paper in there. So that'll bind to this and make it a lot more like a clay. I'm gonna put in about, oh, I don't know, half cup. And now I'm gonna mix the concrete in with it. Pretty good consistency there. Holds its shape a little bit. It's kind of like a wet clay and as it stands. As it stands, it'll get even more clay-like. So the first thing I'm gonna do if I really want to get it to adhere well is I'm taking a bunch of this acrylic stuff and I'm just gonna soak it in there really nice. The uh, cement that I'm adding will have a tendency to stick better. So that's what this acrylic stuff's for. Keep it skinny because we don't want those uh, mosaic tiles sticking out too far here. You ever notice when you're making your art, it's very hard to talk because you're into a non-communicative way of working. Pretty close. I don't want to overwork it, so I'm going to put a little bit more brushing on it, just smooth it out a little bit here and there. I like that smooth look to it.
plain, simple, basic shapes. Uh, you think my tiles will make it look nice. The nose may be a little too fat. I might need to make that a little taller. Starting to dry. I've got it in the Las Vegas sun. That ought to dry it out pretty fast. This is just how you make pie crust. Use the same thing I use there, I guess. A little bit abstract. Overall, pretty darn good though. So I'm trying to just fill in all these shapes here. Yeah, this stuff's pretty good. It's pretty moldable. I think putting more paper pulp in would definitely improve its adhesion. Pat, pat, pat. Press, 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 press. Tap, 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 tap. More off work on his lips and eyes here. Oh, I've got all this good clay I've been making here. So these are a whole bunch of selenite crystals that I got from Amazon. I searched all over and found that that was the best price, six inches long. They sent about 10 of them, and what I had to do is split them to make this many. So here's how you split it, just so you know. It's kind of fun. You stick it on probably a hard surface like this. Uh, this one's kind of thick, so I thought I might try to split it. It might not work. Then you put your little chisel kind of where you think you want to split it. Got it. Split it. Right, what else? This one's too wide, so I'm going to split this one in half. It doesn't really go with the other ones. Ow. That's it. Don't hit it too hard. I recommend using eye protection when you do this because the shattered crystals can fly somewhere, I guess. So the other thing I did was I made little points on it on all of the end. Can you see those points? So I find a spot that I want to make the point. And it's a lot harder than I thought this material would be. So I put it at like a 45 degree angle and I just rub, 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 rub. And it starts to kind of make a nice little point here. See that? File it down with a file, make a point. Okay, so here's all my little crystals that I've made. Selenite crystals. You know, it takes a little bit of work, but not too much. I was surprised at how strong these little crystals are. I also have other crystals that I'm gonna add in, regular crystals, not selenite crystals. And I gotta figure out a way to adhere these to my head that I've made out there. So what I'm planning on doing is making sort of like a template that I'm gonna hot melt glue to the top of the head of my uh, sculpture. And then I can lay the crystals on that and glue them into place with uh, clear epoxy. This is Gorilla Glue right here. I did not like see the nose, it fell over and it just a piece just kind of popped off. It was sandy. I didn't do my mixture very well. I think maybe what I did was I put too much uh, paper pulp in it on that last batch because it was just kind of a little bit flaky and stuff. I didn't like it. I mean, it was still strong, but not really strong enough. So what I did was I sprayed it like this 
which sucks the glue into it. This says it has capillary action. I don't know what that means, but yeah, I do. It basically means it sucks it into cracks. It made a really nice strong bond here. I've let this dry for a week or more now and it's super strong so I think that uh, my tiles will adhere real well to it. I've got this crevice up here on top where the uh, crystals can kind of mount themselves. Put the crystals in, mix a little of my epoxy. I need a piece of cardboard. It's about 31 inches uh, long. This is actual marble here so I'll just stick hundreds and hundreds of these all over it and uh, probably keep white on the highlight spots like the parts that stick out off-white and some of these shadows maybe a dark dark darker color under here I've got two gold ones I'm gonna put here for the pupils and uh, this is I got to do this really carefully because I don't want the water to eventually rush it off well, here's my little cardboard template here just took it out of that box right there so what it is, is it's uh, 32 inches long. It's gonna have this area here, which will mount on the uh, back of my head so that I can lay the crystals here and they'll you know, glue them down here to the head. All right, so I'll put that right down to that edge. I cut it so that it can kind of like curve like this. Put this on here, really glue it down nicely in a place that the crystals will fit. I want it to be pretty stable for when I lay the crystals on it and start to glue the crystals in that crevice right there. I'm also reinforcing the front of it so it doesn't wiggle too much. It's making it pretty strong. And my little scaffolding for my crystals is looking good. So he's ready to get his sun rays. This will probably be like the center and that will go playing out like that. So I have all the crystals laid out, little crystals, big crystals. Uh, I have the points spreading out pretty darn evenly. I'm thinking it's starting to look pretty good. Nothing's glued down yet. If I bump it, it would totally screw everything up. I'm gonna mix up the epoxy in here. Just squirt the two of these in together and stir them a lot. This is quick setting stuff, so I have to kind of go quick. Hopefully this will kind of bond them all together without making them look too goofy. Super hot. Alright, it's starting to set up, so I need to leave it alone now. Time to join the pool. Yep, I'm coming in in a minute. Ready? Yep. Uh, the epoxy did great. I have a few regrets because as you can see the cardboard is sort of glued to it so that's a little bit of a problem. Uh, I think the problem is you get in a hurry and then I saw that I only had five minutes to use the epoxy which was true it dried super fast. Uh, once I noticed that I kind of freaked out and I just poured it in there really quick. Um, I mean it's super strong they're not going anywhere you can see when I hit them they don't wiggle at all but anyway I just hate it when I go too fast there's all those problems that arise so I guess that would be my art advice is slow down a little bit kind of like how this hot melt exacto knife thing is working it's sort of cutting through the epoxy pretty well it's hot enough that it can kind of cut it out the pieces that I don't like so that's working nicely Take a little patience, but I have patience. A lot of times in art you have time, but you don't have money. So this is coming off pretty well actually. I like it. Alright, today's the big day. 
I've been looking forward to. I've got everything pretty well set up. I'm going to use these white uh, chips I've made. Probably just start with like down here or something and build my way up. So that's what I'm going to do today is just do some good tests in spots that are not too conspicuous. I've got this kind of like to the thickness of peanut butter. I basically used a third of a cup of uh, mortar and I used five caps of my acrylic fortifier type stuff that makes concrete stick to concrete, makes it kind of rubbery. Keep them at all about the same depth. And don't let too much glue ease up between them because then you'll have problems cleaning it. Try to keep it as clean as you can. I'm going to pack them nice and tight together. Make sure it feels like it gets sucked on there a little bit. This is just too much. Maybe I could work a little faster if I'm in an area that's not so hard to get to. It's definitely starting to dry out. Getting a little better as time goes on here. Everything's always hard the first time you do it. Art and life, I guess. And things get better faster. I built up this nose a little bit too. So now I'm just uh, mixing this, letting it sit for five minutes. I decided to inspect each stone. So I've looked at each stone and I've trimmed off the back of a lot of them so they're not so tall. Some of them are too high and they're kind of poking up higher than others. As you can sort of see, it's very rough. All right, I've done most of the sides here. I still need to put the grout in. But now I'm gonna do like under the chin here a little bit. I'm gonna do black under here, I think and create sort of like a defining edge because I feel like that everything's going to be too boring if it's all just white. So I'm trying to create a little contrast here and put those underneath the eyes up here, maybe in the nostrils, maybe on the top lip there, and along this edge here to create a sense of depth when you stand back. Look who came out. It's getting the sun. Taser. Taser face. Glad you lived through it, Taser. You survived. Long, sleepy winter. Nice little rainy day here in Las Vegas area. My pond is getting a little free water. So everything's coming along pretty well here. I've got the whole kind of facial structure. I decided to push the shadows a little bit. Uh, I've got a pretty nasty bowl. I've got my mortar here. Uh, I've got a mixer that I'm ruining, my kitchen mixer. This is our new pug, Mac. He thinks he's a really great helper. He's always got his fingers in everything we're trying to do. So we'll hopefully keep him out of the pictures here as we work on this next little demo. Okay, here's all the tiles I've been working on. I just wanted to show you. I, I could use a tile cutter and I did use it a little bit to make strips like this. Instead, I just used this little guy here and I just got really pretty fast at clipping these off like that. See that? What do they call nippers? So I got good at that. But the other thing that I really learned I needed to do over time was to clip the backs of these. So I got really good at kind of like getting the right depth like that and then clipping off the back and that made a, a tile that was pretty much perfect in terms of depth. I, I had to get them all consistent. They were just looking really lousy, some high, some low. So I got to where I could t kind of feel where my fingers were. And I never pinched myself once. <laughs> and I did that for thousands and thousands of tiles, but it was totally worth it because I had ultimate control over how deep they were and stuff. And I really loved all the shapes and colors I got. So every tile is a little different. You might just find out that it's really too hard to clip. Just don't do it if it's too hard to clip. Find different tiles to do this on. The nippers can go right on the edge. They don't really have to go clear over. They can go just on the edge like that. You have to just keep your fingers out of the way when it comes back down. Nice. All the same depth. Here's my dark ones and here's my gray ones. Uh, some blues in there too. I also have these that are more like terracotta. But I am starting to work on I'm making uh, lines here, dark and white, and that'll go across here. Can't wait to get it in over there at my pond. I 
got just a little bit left to do over here. So I wanted to show you my process here. I, I've got this uh, concrete bonding adhesive stuff. This is a pretty good brand here, I'd recommend. So I'm going to shake that up. I'm going to pour out five capfuls. Five, a little extra gets in, it's not going to kill anything. Tighten it up because it will dry on you a little bit if you're not careful. And I've got this uh, mortar mix here, mosaic and glass tile mortar mix. So it's pretty good, strong stuff. Really like it, especially with this rubberized uh, acrylic stuff. So I'm just taking uh, what looks like oh, one third of a cup of the powder, putting it in my little bowl here, get that out of the rain, and then I've got my little mixer here. I've got a rubber spatula, which I like for um, stirring it a little bit more, and then I'm going to scrape that off the sides, just like frosting and kind of smoosh it around a little bit, make sure all the powder's mixed in well. And then what I got is this little Ziploc bag here. See that? And I'm just gonna cut off a tiny little corner. It just depends on how much you wanna squirt out. So I just cut off a little corner there. I'm gonna open it up like this. Turn it inside out for a second. I'm gonna gather up all my goopy goop. Sweep it off. As if I was picking up one of my dog turds. Uh, don't quote me on that, that's nasty. And then I'm going to pull this inside out. That one turned out rather beautifully. So now I'm going to zip lock that like that. And I'm going to figure out which side my little hole is on. So now I'm going to push that down into that little corner here, just like as if you know you're doing frosting. So I'm gathering it up and then I'm going to spin it to lock it off, just like you do when you're doing frosting on a cake. Now I have this nice little thing, and because it's in a Ziploc, it will actually stay uh, wet a little longer. Let's show you how this works. I mean, I just kind of go like this and push it on and smear it around a little bit. The other thing you could do is use this tool here, like I've shown you before, and you can sort of scrape it once, and then I'll make those little lines on it. But honestly, I find that that's too thin. So I like it a little thicker, and as I work out, I kind of push the excess out. While it's nice and fresh like that, just get your little stone and you just kind of, I always roll it around a little bit, like tap, 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 so that it gets plenty of, uh, of uh, mortar on the back of it. And then I always try to wipe it off a little bit because if you don't clean it off, it's harder to clean off once it dries. So here's another little rock. I'll put some on the back. This is called back buttering. Just put a little squirt on there like that. And as long as you push it right up against the other ones that you're sticking it next to and kind of push it down pretty firmly, it usually sticks really well and looks pretty darn good. A little decorations I've been collecting to supplement my little pond here. Here's where I feed the fish. A lot of guppies. Got about 10 koi fish in there somewhere. I put these little side things in so the turtle wouldn't get out. There's Taser Face, my turtle, water turtle. He's chilling out and he's watching this spider right here. It's making a web. So fine I can't even see it. I'm gonna be catching guys like this pretty soon. I hope. Yeah, they're coming out. All right, everything's looking pretty good. I've drawn some eyes on here. Here's the still that I'm basing it off of. I superimposed it on the actual sculpture so that I could kind of get a sense of how the eyes might work when they're laid out. I'm going to really spend a little time using a whole pile of stones here to put a lot of black, off black grays and blues kind of to form up more shadowy look of these eyes which I really like how this sharpie turned out so I'm thinking I'm gonna do white kind of iridescent white and then I'm gonna do a blue ring and then I'm gonna do a little bit of white over here for the eye parts and I'm gonna do lots of black in here I've doubled up all the spikes I use some uh, liquid nails to try to get those crystals stuck in there and it was just too rubbery. They didn't stick very well. So I tried to kind of shore it up here along the edge with a whole bunch of stones. And I used this baby here that got this pretty cheap at Harbor Freight. Uh, this sort of wire brush. 
Maybe you could see that as I go over it, that wire brush knocks off a ton of the material that sort of stuck on top of the stones. It really cleans them up, half polishes them, and then I put in this uh, grout in between the stones. That's what I'm going to do now, I'm mixing up another batch here. So let's go make some grout. I'm going to actually make a double batch this time, which is something I don't do, but I've gotten faster and better at it. Here's my nasty old bowl. So I've got a uh, one third cup of my unsanded grout. I've got a kind of a nice ivory off-white color that I picked. Okay, so I got two uh, thirds cup, and then over here is my acrylic fortifier. Give it a little shake, and I figured that when I do the, the mortar, see this? This is what I glued the stones on with. When I did that, it took, oh, five capfuls of the acrylic stuff, but the unsanded grout takes a little less, like about four, four and a half. So I'm gonna do like nine of these instead of water. One, two, just get it close, you know, three. I've got a rubber spatula. I'm gonna mix it a little bit just to kind of get it so it doesn't fly everywhere when I start to mix it with my little hand mixer. Here we go. So that works beautifully for that. Trying to keep this off the rug and off the sidewalk. You get all excited about your art and next thing you know you're ruining everything. So then I use my rubber spatula, kind of scrape it all in. It's a little bit runny, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. Uh, if, I, if it was too dry, I squirt with this. So I'm gonna add a little more powder because I don't like, I, it's gotta be thin enough to go down in the cracks, but thick enough not to be wiped out when you start doing the uh, uh, sponging, you know, where you take off the excess. That's nice. That's more like peanut butter like I just got it. That's it. Now, you're supposed to let it sit for five minutes, so this is about the time when I go take a pee or, or you know, work on something else for a few minutes. My hands always hurt when I work all day like this. I guess I'm getting old. So I'll massage this spot right here. Ooh, that's nice. Ow! Okay, I'll let it sit a little while. Zoe, come here. Hi. How you doing, buddy? Yeah, Zoe, that's a good girl. Very good girl for me. Thanks for coming by. Okay, you ready? Yep. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's already recording. It's already recording? Yeah, for the past two minutes. Huh, okay, well, let's stop it. Yeah, so here's how I do it. I take my rubber spatula, I just slap it on there. It's thick. Now, I am going to do the next step, which is, it's all on there like a nice coat of frosting, and then I just kind of hit it, knock it down into the cracks. So I'm just filling in every hole, and I'm kind of pushing down pretty hard. Tap, 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 tap. Pushing it, stirring it, pushing it, stirring it. Jam, 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 jam. Pushed up, pushed down, pushed sideways. Just get it in there. And pushing, and pushing. Hey, 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 oh yeah. Show the weather, trying. I got sunshine. On a cloudy day. I got love in a certain way. Those aren't the lyrics, but I don't care. Okay, so anyway, so I, I think I've done a pretty good job of getting that down into the cracks. What do you think, T-Bone? Yeah. I got an edge here that's pretty stiff, so I kind of go over it, like really dig down in there. So I'm pushing down and kind of rework, mm, reworking it, mm, 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 like that. It does start drying out, I hit it with my little spray, just a little bit. So I went to Harper Freight again, of course, because they're so cheap, I like that place. Advertisement, if they want to be my sponsor and give me a million dollars, that'd be great. Here's rubber. I do this because a lot of the stones are kind of sharp. Scratch my fingers, break my fingernails. These are too tight because I have giant, huge hands. The ladies love my hands. <laughs> now, last step I do is I just really massage it. Push, push, push down. It helps me see 
some of these stones it's like oh is that a stone or what see there is there's a stone under there all right so i would say we're ready to rinse this next step is to take my sponge and just go over it like i go over it like 10 or 20 times wring it out so it's pretty wet and then you just start taking off the excess oh yeah there's some nice little hidden stones down in there see that so those guys are starting to come out again all right so i've used that sponge and if you look up here i've cleaned it really nicely it's really shiny really pretty there's hardly any grout where i don't want it see that little spot can you see that see how it's like partially covering my stone i really don't want any stones covered so i use this more like a sandpapery kind of rag and i rub until that stone shows back up see this dark stone right there it's covered right so i'm going to scratch off until I fill the border of that stone. I'm gonna kinda of just wipe it. All of a sudden I got a nice beautiful little square there, right? You see how rough that cloth is? Kinda of nice, it really gets in there. And then I can also clean off the face of the stones a little bit, scratch them a little bit, rub them with this. It just shines everything up. Now it's just looking at every stone, just taking a little time. I tried to make every stone stand out a little bit. And I wiped them really well with my rag. So this baby's pretty much done. Now I just need to do the eyes. That's my next big goal. I'm finishing the eyes now. Uh, and I've fixed a few holes where the rain gets in and stops my mind from wandering where it will go. I pressed it in pretty hard with my finger to the point where I had a little piece of glass cut me. So then I just go and kind of dig out all the white stuff. It's looking really nice. It's going to be done pretty soon. I got the hose today, so I'm going to put that out there in my pond. So that'll be up there in that corner right there pretty soon. So I painted a little bit of black paint, acrylic paint. Black here. And also I used a little bit of like a bronze color, which has like little metal flakes in it. So I put that kind of in these spots where I had planned it to be like dark columns. See that kind of where it alternates between white and dark. And I put a little shadowing in, like under the mouth and under the chin and under the nose. And I put some shadowing up inside the nose there and shadowing up under the eyes. A little shadowing under the eye, but not much. And I kind of brought it around the side just a little bit. So I just watered it down a lot and just sort of painted it into this like that. And then I took my rough rag again that I like and I wiped it all out so that the top parts of the rocks are nice and glossy still but little crevices and stuff have dark kind of dark spots like you see right there in that stone right there the paint got down inside there so I really like how it looks I think it's done now I'm just going to take some of this glossy stuff here that I got it's a like you know stone high gloss finish sealer basically what i want is i want it to look sort of wet and glossy and shiny and hopefully all these stones that are kind of glistening in the light will glisten even more once i have that shiny stuff down in the cracks okay the big day has arrived it's done all the crystals have been glued back in and fortified pretty good so now I've got this ladder so I can step on it and not fall in the pond a little bit I can put some wood on it if I'm really worried about it and over here you can see I've built this platform put a level on it to make sure that you know the water will fall downward into the pond like that and then I put these anchors in the wall very strong with the masonry bit because I'm going to lock this thing in place. I don't want anyone stealing it. 
Then they had this conveniently placed fat hose, so I stuck my own thinner hose in, which comes out down here. And that is going to come out like this, and probably around here, I'm gonna put the pump. Here's my little uh, pump here that I put together. Stuck this hose on it, which comes out of the mouth of the sculpture here. It goes into this little filter box I made. It's basically two pots, and in between the two pots, is an air conditioner filter, kind of filters out the fish turtle poop before it sends it through this hose, up and out through my sculpture's mouth. Now I just have to put this baby in place pretty soon after I hook up the pump. All right, so you can kind of see in the back here where I put the, the hose into the PVC pipe I built. It passes through, comes spitting out here out the front. So that's pretty cool. I can turn that up or down with my little fader. So here it is, it's all done, it's in its place. It's really nice, it's fun. I've got the uh, a pretty good strong pump coming through this hose, which I'll hide later. I've sort of swept back the plants a little so I can see my fish a little better. I put this little fader on and I put this little lid over so that I can keep the water out. Got some of the lights on a timer there. The pump stays on all the time. Let me see if I can turn it down even a little bit more here. Trying to put this in plastic so that it won't. Uh... There we go. That's kind of nice right there. Just a little trickle it. So you can kind of hear it at night. It is finished. And get another string of these lights because they're kind of cool looking. Well, this looks pretty good. I like it. I see here on my chair. Splashing. Um, but overall, yeah, I'm very pleased with how it all turned out. It's been a really fun project here. Loved it. I'm not super new age, but these uh, selenite crystals are supposed to have super healing properties along with the quartz crystals. So I feel like every time I come out here, I get all my chakras realigned and get all healed up a great place to meditate. Well, it turned out great. I'm very proud of how it looks and how it functions. So now I just get to rest out here Enjoy the sun, enjoy the sound of the water splashing, and throw an occasional little treat in from the fish for my turtle. <sighs> Alright, talk to you on the next project.